name's Simon. This is my 1992 Dodge B350 travel home. And uh, come check it out. All right, so this is it. This is my home for the last 16 months. As you can see, I just barely fit. I'm very tall, but uh, it's a pretty tall van. It's pretty good. It came factory with this pop top and a lot of the regular RV conversions. It has a fridge, a bathroom, had a shower, which I modified. And again, like all this stuff, I ended up modifying like LEDs and power systems and it's all off grid, solar panel on the roof, all of that. Started off 90s, very regular RV, and it has changed drastically over the last 16 months. This is actually my bed up here. This is where I sleep most every night. I just pull the uh, storage bits out of there and I flip the mattress around and that's it. Just gives you a nice spectacular view when you're up here, which is really nice. During the daytime, I store all of these are panels for all my windows and stuff. It helps with insulation. Also helps get keep it totally, totally dark if I ever actually want to sleep in, which isn't often, but you know, sometimes. It takes some getting used to. Like the first couple days felt a little claustrophobic, but I can roll over and still get a couple inches off my shoulders. So um, you get used to it pretty quickly. And now it's like, I, I sleep better in here than anywhere else. I'm six foot six. Which, by the way, feet dangling off the edge of the bed, you know, like this is the only situation where I have a bed that's big enough for me, right? Like if I was in any other camper van, this just wouldn't fit anything. Other mods, like a lot of front of house mods, stripped down that uh, doghouse, put the water bottles and stuff, little, these little USB outlets and extra lights, GPS, all that stuff. It's kind of average stuff that people do for a car they use a lot. But back here it starts getting a little weird. <laughs> I did um, a lot of extra storage along the sides. I have a, a flip up cutting board, which is so premium from when I'm cooking because this is the only part of the RV where I'm fully standing up so I can work right here. It's really nice and it gets out of the way when I'm not using it and strap it down. A lot of extra storage, bookshelf, bread baskets. Power systems are really good too, actually. Um, a totally off grid, huge battery bank in there. Got uh, 360 amp hours. 240 watts on the roof of solar power, 20 amp MPPT solar charge controller, and um, a lot of little power mods. Try to go as much DC to DC. A lot of stuff is 5 volt powered. I generally do that. And if not, I'll try to get something that's 12 volt powered. Last ditch effort is uh, 120. So far, the only things I run off 120 AC are my laptop and my drone. Everything else is DC to DC, which is nice. Saves a lot of power. The van is like my sensible side. The motorbike is just like a little bit of mischief off the side. Like I get into trouble with the motorbike. The van, it's just steady plodding. It'll get you through there smoothly, but no thrills. And uh, the motorcycle, a little bit too many thrills sometimes, but I, I see so much more of the world between the two of them now that uh, it's, ex it's opened a whole new like off-roading world to me, which is amazing. It's been really rewarding. And in the back, it sinks down a bit. Now this is basically where my solar panel sits just above us. It's also where my Wi-Fi antenna sits, which gives me really great reception. That's a home-built situation. Uh, Yagi antenna with a booster and an external Wi-Fi card, a high-powered Wi-Fi card that uses two USB outlets to power it. It will get, I've gotten range over eight kilometers once connected to a, a ranger station Wi-Fi network. So. <laughs> It, it, it's pretty good, especially out here on BLM land. It's fantastic. Other mods back here, lots of like little leather straps to hold stuff down. Quick access to things makes life a lot easier in a small space. Like you got your plates, you know, you got your bowls, your major cooking utensils. Up here, all my storage, I added lighting inside of it. So if you flip it open, all of these have truck bed lights so I can see everything inside, which is really handy. Literally this side is like just spices because I cook a lot. So this is just spices, four cupboards. And on this side, it's all just canned goods, which I'm almost out of, but 
and uh, and beer. That's pretty simple. Down below, it's all just tools, and I have uh, a little basket here for dirty laundry and shoes. And this is my closet, which doesn't own hold much. I have enough clothes to get through two weeks. That's 14 shirts, 21 pairs of socks, 14 pairs of underwear, one pair of pants, one pair of shorts, and a swim trunks, and one suit. Very efficient when it comes to my clothes. So back here we have a bit more of the stock RV stuff. You got your hood vent, your three burner stove, fridge with a freezer combo. This runs on three ways, so I keep it on propane all the time. So far, so good. I mean, like, they're not the most high tech things. 1982 wasn't a noteworthy high tech era, but they are still going strong, so can't fault them for that. Back here I have a toilet, tiny little toilet, barely fit in it. And I had a shower, which I did not fit in. So I removed it and added the storage, which just literally carries tools and camera gear. And on the other side, I had a second sink, but if you see, it's like two feet from one sink to the other sink. So I just removed it and I put uh, a shower head on it and I just hang that out the back and that's my shower now, right out the back of the van. Little water heater to heat that water up, a furnace as well. But basically, yeah, this has everything that a big RV has just crammed into a tiny, tiny little space. So, uh, I'm very happy with it, to be honest. And I still fit in a parking spot. I'm 21 feet long and nine and a half feet tall. Honestly, this van isn't the biggest van in the world. It's not the nicest van in the world. It's also not the cheapest van in the world, but it's a nice combination of all of those things. Um, and it's a direct reflection of what living in this thing full time has turned it into. Um, this is a vehicle for travel and just for, to help me see North America. And it is performed admirably for that and uh, I've affected it greatly. So everything you see here has been a direct reflection of my travels. I'm really happy with this van. It's taught me a lot about what I need to survive to be happy and to see the world.